What's going on, everyone? How are we doing this evening? I'm super excited to be here. Tonight, for Palette Creator Spotlight, we have Unika, aka Pi, aka the Funk Fu Pi from Dicey Amazons. Unika, what's going on? How are you tonight? I'm doing great. And can I just say thank you so much for saying my name correctly? It is a talent that not few people can get right on the first try. So, you know, like I, I have to applaud it when I see it. Hey, uh, if saying people's names right, I feel like it's a just should be a very easy courtesy. So you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, it should be. But I spend the majority of my time at work hearing my name butchered. So Ugh. yeah, it's not my favorite, but I can't really do much about it because those aren't my decisions to say my name wrong. Also, hi, um, Priestess. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. Friends in chat. Yay. Yay. Excellent. <laughs> So first off, I need to thank you because this was super last minute. Me and Mariam have been in post-con recovery from last week. And I was I like, I can only bet. I have things queued up, but I need someone this week <laughs> just available. And it was so perfect. And I'm super yeah, excited to yeah. hear about all your good things. But just to get the jitters out of the way, I do have a quick random question. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Hit me. Do you think mm -hmm. Pop Tarts mm -hmm. qualify as dumplings? <laughs> I think you broke me a little bit. <laughs> it's a running I don't... it's a running conversation slash debate that we're having here on Utopia. Okay, I mean you know how much friends. I love to debate. So let me let me let me walk you all through my thought process right we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna brainstorm this right now right in my mind from my limited perspective dumplings are something that i have the dumplings are something that i traditionally have that are boiled so like chicken and dumplings mm -hmm. when i have like wonton soup or uh usually are like most chinese foods that i have the dumplings that i have are like steamed or they're they're wet in some form pop tarts are baked so I would call them like a, a uniform free form tart, right? And so like in college, I got into baking because I needed another way to like blow off steam <laughs> and I was hungry. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, yeah, I started baking for myself and my partner and uh, we got real fat and it was nice. And I made a lot of like tarts with like plum and cream cheese. Mm. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, we're fancy. We're we're out here eating the fanciest plum preservatives. You know what I'm saying? Like we were at Publix, you know, just clearing out the racks of all the preservatives and cream cheese. Um, but yeah, so following that, I, 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 I don't, I don't think that they are a dumpling, uh, only because of like my knowledge of what a dumpling is in my opinion, you know, so, but I'm willing to have like my opinion change on that because I know very little about dumplings. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so I believe you and I are on the same side of this topic because mm, while one right can side. argue that Pop-Tarts have the same baseline qualifications of ingredients and the form that they are put into, it's a pastry filled with something, mm -hmm. right? That could yeah. be call qualified as a dumpling. But the real definitive uh, factor of a dumpling is how it is cooked. Yeah. yeah would yeah, you yeah. steam a Pop-Tart? Would you saute a Pop-Tart? That's and nasty. And would you put it in a soup? No. I would not. That just sounds mushy and a conflicting palate, palate flavor palate. You know, I, I don't, I do not want to eat that. Sam, <laughs> Well, yeah, basically. Welcome to our hot spicy takes, everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got another one for you if you, if you got some time. Let's go. Is a cheesecake a pie or cake? Ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. I've not mm -hmm. been hit with this question. I think Mariam has. Cheesecake is... Uh, mm -hmm. Cheesecake is a pie for me because I like pie and I don't like cake. And I like cheesecake. Everybody likes pie. And it has a graham cracker crust. That's a pie. You know what, Jess? I like you. It's official. We agree. And that's basically what it takes for me to like you. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, I, I had a, 
I had a semi semi serious debate with someone regarding uh, whether the, the 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 cakiness of a cheesecake. To which my first question was, where is the yeast? Is it rising? How does it rise? Because cakes rise. Cakes got yeast in them. Even vegan cakes rise a little bit. It's not a serious rise like other cakes, but like cheesecakes don't do that. You can even have cheesecakes that you don't bake at all. So. And I, I, and then after I had that initial thought, I did research because, you know, back up your thoughts with science, you know what I'm saying? Like, so uh, back when cheesecakes became popular, they called like everything a cake. Right. So that was the got lumped into. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cheesecake got lumped into it, but no, it's a pie. It's a pie and I'll fight about it. We'll take it outside. Well, in social distancing kind of situation, but yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll throw nerf darts at each other. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'd do it. <laughs> so, Unika, you're here. You said yes yeah. to a last minute interview. Please introduce yeah. yourself. Tell us who you are. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Unika, AKA Pi. Um, I am a co-founder of Dice the Amazons. Uh, we are a cohort of BIMPOC people. I'm not gonna put us into the one gender of woman. Um, so yeah, we're, Bimpoc people and we do and talk about everything literally everything from video games to justice right so uh we have shows um where it's just video game play like traditional twitch uh streams uh where we talk about or not talk about we play like games i've been playing ghost of tsushima i just finished that uh this past monday and the emotional roller coaster was insane uh, we'll talk about it later. Uh, to another show, uh, to oh, we have a sh- new show called Dicey Science, where uh, Christy answers science questions that your high school um, biology teacher wouldn't touch. To a show that me and Kalia, who is high priestess in chat right now, do called Parallels, where we watch uh, interviews by um, uh, activists from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and try and find out similarities into their conversations and how we can then progress our conversations that we're having with people, not just black people, not just white people, but people in general, you know, forward. So yeah, that's what we're doing uh, with Dicey Amazons. And then because I'm a hustler, baby, uh, I'm also doing, or not also doing, I'm the CEO of uh, Uncle Eddie's Robot Garage. And that is a company that is based around collegiate competitive robotics, which I have to slow down and slight because like I have a speech impediment and that's I, it's a, a hard lot to say. phrase. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine me like excited like to investors like <laughs> and you just get like a word vomit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and robotics teams are expensive, so that's gotta oh, be an interesting. Yeah. Uh, oh venture. yeah, they're they're not cheap. Yeah, 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 they're not cheap. Um, so yeah, I'm working with um I'm working with IC Amazon to do a stream for that for the competition that would be taking place in China, but because we now live in the age of COVID, we cannot do that, so we're moving it virtually. So that'll be coming later later um in the month we might push it because like what is time anymore um and then my most important job um is the giver of snacks and belly rubs to my seven-year-old basset hound um his name is edison he does judge you and i i have my neighbor um who's like the most amazing person that i've ever lived next to um her and my dog are now involved in a relationship and it's making me jealous and i don't like it Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. It's not. It's not fair. Mostly because I'm, I'm bitter. You know, I'm single. I've been single for a long time, and like my dog has like ladies falling over him, and it's not fair. Mm. <laughs> Edison, Edison has my heart. Yeah, and I haven't even seen him yet, except yeah, a picture. Well, I think that was your Zoom picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Zoom picture. So like all my all my professional work calls are like you just see Edison's face. Rightfully so. so. This is ideal. Yeah. He deserves it. Yeah. He's going gray now. So I'm like, you know, bro, same. Same. Yeah, it's it's such it's so cute and uh it's interesting to see when when our doggos go gray. Uh, our little mm. boy is seven as well, and you're like, you have Aww. gray eyebrows and your little chin is getting white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. He's got like arthritis setting it, setting it. I'm so, I'm so sad. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> so you're an engineer by day. Yeah, yeah, cloud engineer. What does that mean for the the layman that we we non techies? 
Yeah, so um, there are molecules in the air and I pull them to form a, no. <laughs> so <laughs> I was ready. I was like, we're going to do the whole bit. We're going to clip it and we're going to spread fake news. Great. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I would go viral the wrong way and I'm not here for that. Um, <laughs> um, so as a cloud engineer, um, I work with... Um, within my company with other teams and companies to develop and implement uh, their cloud architecture solutions. So uh, Utopia as a company like needs to have like a website and data and that that website has applications that need to like do things and whatnot. And you wanna have that exist in the cloud because you do not want to deal with physical servers because like they're expensive and they're really hot and like, don't do that. Um, so you would, as a person who might not have the expertise or the time or the desire to then implement that yourself like you would contact my company and someone like me uh, with the knowledge of cloud architecture would then design your cloud architecture for you um, and then you know we will work together to make sure that your solution is cost efficient and reliable and if there was a failure then the failure would be like um uh not reliable um backing up your data is what I'm basically trying to say. Like, back up your data, folks. Okay, I'm tired of talking to people. No, I'm going a whole soapbox here about backing up your data. <laughs> this is like music to my ears. I could probably have an offline conversation with you and just listen on and on and on about this. But... I will hold <laughs> sessions because people need to know things. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we've had an explosive amount of growth in technology and no one was ready and no one's put mm -hmm. in the time to understand how we are getting the tools that we have and how we can better protect ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or if that tool even works for you. I had my mother um, a couple of years ago, like when I was back in school, because I went I went back to school later in life. Um, and she was like, should I get an onion router? And I was like, no, why? Are you <laughs> trying to sell babies on the black market? Or like, <laughs> what are you doing on the internet? Uh, a basic VPN will work well for you. You don't need an onion router. Um, uh, but yeah, people hear things and like headlines and little clippings and, and think that the world is about to end. And, you know, the Internet can be a very dangerous place. But I think that if you're if you arm yourself with knowledge um, and a sarcastic, not sarcastic. Um, um, I can't think of the word anymore. It's been a long day. Um, not sarcastic. Uh, skeptic. Skeptic mm -hmm. mind. Uh, you'll be adequately prepared to say, hmm, I don't know yet, you know, and then do some research. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't want to jump to the uh, very secure lined bunker that can survive the nuclear adaptation, but yeah. in the cloud. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so by day, you have a super cool job and you do really important work there. And then by night, you give a lot of time to the tabletop space. What part of it? Yeah. Like what? Where did you how did you start in tabletop? Yeah. So I'm a poser. I'll just come out front and just say <laughs> I'm a poser. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a very honest person, you know? So I was in my home and college and watching my favorite show, Community, and they had the episode where they did Dungeons and Dragons. And I was like, this is awesome. How can I do this? And how can I make this happen in my life? Uh, right. Luckily, in my uh, degree and the people that I surround myself with, uh, at the time, uh, my roommate was also a computer science major with me. And so he was like, we can just go to like a game store and just like find a game. And I was like, okay. So like we woke up the next morning and went down to a local game store and I was very lucky. I know that this is not the experience for a lot of people, especially like black queer people walking into these spaces, but um, the dungeon master that, um, that approached me and me and my roommate um, where we were talking and like his, uh, he was a white guy and his wife is black. And so like, he kind of assumed that we were a couple after like going through that, like, oh, we're roommates. We're not, you know, in a relationship. Also, I'm super gay. Um, he was like, come back, you know, later, like in a couple of hours, we're going to have our session. Like, I'll help you guys get characters and whatnot. Um, and so my roommate already like knew how to create, we were playing Pathfinder. So he already knew how to create a character. He did it like that. I spent like the next, like, so long trying oh to figure out how to goodness. create my pathfinder character um, and we didn't have like all of the resources on the internet because right. we had to walk uphill in the snow both ways you know so. yeah i can't imagine <laughs> yeah it took forever but that was uh almost a decade ago and uh yeah i've been playing pretty consistently ever since and so when i moved uh to texas 
I, it took me one, I'll say it took me forever to find like a, a queer community that I vibed with. And by vibed with, I meant like not all white people. Um, and so I started going to these poetry slams um, oh. where, oh yeah. And San Antonio has like, and like no, no like smoke, like San Antonio has like legit some of the best poets, slam poets in the country, yeah. like winning competitions, you know, like it's crazy. Um, so uh, yeah, I um, ended up meeting Candy and Darcy at one of those poetry slam uh, on like, you know, at a bar. And so like, after like hanging out and talking, like another couple of weeks went by and then Candy and Darcy approached me about like, just like a couple of us having a game together because we were all talking about playing TTRPGs. And so after we like got the group together and that's when I met um, Kalia who's high priestess, excuse me, and Katie and Christy um we all like met together and we started playing and then christy's husband tony who's like the sweetest guy ever was like y'all are really funny like y'all should start a twitch channel and just like stream it because like you know it's funny and like you should be capturing it yes um more like months uh candy yeah uh, yeah uh, it's what is time you know <laughs> very irrelevant it's very irrelevant. Uh, so yeah, after a certain amount of time later, uh, we uh, like had a meeting between all of us and was like, yeah, let's start streaming it. And then so after a lot of ups and downs um, personally and like trying to get things together, like we now in 2020, we're like building up some steam and whatnot and then COVID hit. And so we were like, what the hell are we gonna do now? Yeah. Um, and then so luckily we've been able to like um, stay motivated amongst ourselves and like we're very happy um, with the community that we're building right now you have a, a lot to be proud of like I've Thank been you. a lurker <laughs> I've just been like <laughs> I'm I'm just here I really we really enjoy lurkers. this and it's hard uh, as you can imagine as content creators mm -hmm. it's really hard to tune into other actual plays all the time regularly yeah. so it's like yeah. at, at best we try and keep the view going right yeah 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 no i appreciate it because like i'm i'll tell you what I'll, i will sit down for work and like open up my uh my uh my desktop and just like open a bunch of tabs of like streamers that i like want to be watching but like can't devote my entire attention to but i still want to support them and like that's how i do that or like retweeting someone or like you know interacting with them is i think is a great way to show support if you don't have like four hours to like solely devote to like watching you know a group of people on, on the internet a hundred percent in the day and age where we put our faces online and play our games and label it as entertainment, uh, mm -hmm. not everyone is entertaining. And part of it is learning mm -hmm. your skills as a performer. And part of it is learning how to genuinely engage with your spaces. So yeah. I think Dicey Amazon's like, whoever's running the account, whether you guys split it all together or it's mostly you, you're you're very responsive. And it's it's admirable because I know how hard that is. Oh yeah, um, the 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 uh, Twitter account that we have—that's all Candy. Candy uh, has taken that, and I I interact under like my uh, mm -hmm. profile on Twitter. Um, but yeah, Candy is the one who's like doing all the connecting, and like I'll get a random Twitter message from Candy, like, "Hey, like go talk to that person and like try to get on that, you know, let's talk to that person or whatever." Um, and then on Discord side, I'm the one that I wake up really early in the morning because like apparently that's just a thing that I do now. And so as I'm doing my morning stuff, I'll send out a good morning message to everyone because like I think it's a nice day way to start off the day. Um, and I get to like, I'm a professional like trash talker. So like I, I use it as a way to just like, you know, cause you can use your trash talk for good and evil, you know? So like you get that 6 a.m. message from me, like, good morning, <laughs> you know, how y'all doing out there? This is what we got coming to Dicey Amazons today, you know? That is good energy. That that was That's <laughs> smart. I've never thought about it like that. Like use your trash talking for good. Yeah, 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 you can. I mean, there's a lot of times where I use it for negative things, um, as you can see in Dicey Debates, <laughs> but. <laughs> negative is debatable. I would argue that it's yeah. logical. Some uh -huh. things need to be said. Hey, you know, and I'll, I'll be the one to say it, you know, like I'll, I'll take that. I'll take the shot on that. Yeah, be the straight shooter. Um, <laughs> well, as straight as we can possibly be. Yeah, yeah, it's not that straight. I mean, <laughs> Kalia calls, uh, High Priestess calls what I do a boomerang uh, because I will, especially in our community games, like um, like Jackbox games and even sometimes the dicey debates, like I'll just trash talk and then like take that L right to the face. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah. yeah, the confidence to have the confidence to go into it without knowing the end result. Sometimes you'll get mm -hmm. the boomerang, and that's okay. Yeah. It's yeah, all right. yeah, 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 yeah. I I think it's a, it's quality content for me to just be like talking, 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 and then just like hit right on my face you know with something and then be like that's cool it builds character we're good next round you know <laughs> if more people were like that it would be a better place honestly uh, yeah <laughs> thank you for saying that yeah so uh speaking of handles and embarrassing things that we were running mm. around to you you, you want to you want to tell me about your yeah. twitter handle yeah yeah so um Hey, Jess, it makes this sound so fancy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, uh, Priestess, but I'm a classy ass bitch, okay? So it's nothing but class in this Zoom channel right now, you know? Um, Listen, when I heard a debate about Jesus sandals and summits, <laughs> okay. All right. That was a lot of word vomit, and it happened. And <laughs> I just watched yeah. it unfold. It was great. Yeah, more yeah, of yeah. that, please. Yeah, it's it's incredible, like how quickly and like the first couple of ones that we did, like you can tell, like where because I was watching the show that we based it off of, mm -hmm. um, so I had an idea of like how to do it, and I had done it with a couple of other friends before. So the first couple of rounds were kind of like ah, I don't know, kind of freaking out to like someone who's give you a noun, you'd be like, okay, I got two minutes to debate this, this, whatever it is, you know, I'm going to give it all I got, and just like the BS that you spew on the drop of a dime, it's just incredible absolutely it's a, incredible it's 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 hella good like i love watching it in the sense that i'm slow to think i'm a very very methodical thinker so if i'm put on the mm -hmm. on the spot i think practice like that it's one practice in improv and practice in just being confident making you say the things that you want to say yeah 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 i i'm stalling about the funk food you are. story it's but okay it's i okay. oh yeah, yeah yeah we got time yeah, what is time um yeah, so uh, I, I will get into the story, though, um, but I did want to say I am also a very methodical thinker as well. And so doing something that that requires me to like instantly come up with like a, whatever logic I, I train, I follow on that on those two minutes, like I have to just stick with it. And yes, and myself, you know, yeah. because like sometimes I'll like I'll, I'll talk myself into a corner um, and then try to talk myself out of that corner, you know, and it's a. Uh, it does not work out well, you know, but like it's it's entertaining. Um, and I think that it gives us something to talk about even offline. A lot of these conversations, like because um, we did one in the last IC debate that was, uh, it was vanilla versus mm -hmm. cheesecake. Oh. Um, yeah, and so my word was vanilla and I think it was Christy who had cheesecake, I think. I, I could be completely wrong on that. Um, but like I was down, with, I'm, I'm a down my vanilla hill, you know? And so like even in Discord, I was like, okay, I know it's Monday morning now, <laughs> but vanilla, okay, I'm not done talking about it yet. I know that I lost, okay? I know that I lost, but vanilla, okay? I know my two <laughs> minutes is up, but I'm still thinking about it and you should be too. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's great fun. And we are actively searching for to bring other people on to Dicey Debates for a round, whatever, however long you feel comfortable with. So, like, I will 100% ask you and, like, the people that, that you work with at Utopia, like, if y'all are down, next next Dicey Debates, we will add you into the rotation. Yeah, we'll hit it up. I, I, can, okay. I can say universally for myself, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for the gauntlet. I will say... That you're a very nice person, Jess, and I very much appreciate you, and you've been nothing but kind to me. But I will destroy you. No. Okay. Yeah. Once you unleash <laughs> that, when you, it, mm, there's the competitive side, and that gets unleashed in a debate. I hold no bars. Yeah. 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 I mean, we we keep it civil. I I will, I will never say anything that will actually hurt anyone's feelings intentionally, you know, and I will go back and apologize if I did rub some, you know, rub, you know, someone the wrong way. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm coming for you, you know, like whoever, whoever is in my, on the other side of this debate, you're, yep. you're getting these words, you know, and I'm gonna I dance around you with fancy words like Let's such go. and the. <laughs> <laughs> Thusly, therefore you cannot. However, you know, <laughs> ipso facto, you want to get some of those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> okay, so I've done enough stalling. Yep. We're getting into it. Give it to me. 
<sighs> Wait, okay. before you before you told the whole story, does it have anything yeah. to do with martial arts? Um, only in a way that looking back is now probably offensive to Asian people. That's okay. Yeah. I accept. Yeah, this. yeah, 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 and like unintentional, but I should have. And looking back, you know, I was in high school when this whole thing came along. Um, we live in a racist society built on colonialism, where we have to unlearn our own racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is one of the things that we're doing in our show, Parallels. Shameless plug. You good, know? So. good. Parallels <laughs> sounds like good content. Uh, it's it's one of our it's one of my favorite shows that we're doing um, so far. Um, so, Fung Fu Pie was originally supposed to be Kung Fu Pie. Um, as I was creating my AIM screen name to talk with my other high school students, right? So imagine, picture this, you know, for, uh, I think I was 15, 15 year old Unika, you know, I had really weird glasses and that was just overall weird, bad nerd and, uh, and such, but also played sports. Anyway, uh, so earlier in that year, I was in the band room um, doing band things and talking to my my first partner, my first girlfriend at the time. So me and her were hanging out in the band room and being cute and whatnot. And there were a couple of other students around us and she had went to like Walgreens and got, um, I don't know if, if anyone remembers, but they used to have these little hamsters and you would hit the button and they would like sing a little dance or whatever, whatever. Oh, yeah. That so was. this one, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one did like the, I don't know what the official name of the song is, but it's War, you know, it's that song. I don't want to get into it because I, I, I realize now that, that song is like, <laughs> I should not be singing that song anymore. Yeah, that's the hamster with the nunchucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that one. It was that one. So she got me that and I was in the band room and we were hitting play and like just being silly and I'm dancing around to it. Uh, and then my band director walks up behind me and like, just like lets me just embarrass myself, right? So like, it was funny. It was actually like a really funny moment. So that's what I was like, oh, Kung Fu. Um, and then Pai is my nickname for my grandmother. Um, and this is where the story takes a turn for the embarrassing. So, <laughs> so I talked about this on screen the other day, which is the reason why I'm, I'm okay with talking about it now. Um, but uh, yeah, so as a baby, uh, there was this show about this woman who like fought, fought crime uh, and uh, she had like these powerful kicks. I think her name was like Miss Christie or something like that. I don't know. It was like back in the 80s and everyone was like on drugs. Um, but that so, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I detect I detect no lies. Um, so uh, my grandmother, uh, who was helping raise me, um, uh, said that, you know, my, um, my flagellants was potent as one of uh, Christie's kicks, right? So uh, she started calling me like Miss Pooter Pie. Uh, and so like up until like high school, like that's only, that's what she called me, like almost solely, right? Like she never called me Unica. It was always like Miss Pooter Pie. Um, I thought it was funny. Like farts are hilarious. Uh, I don't care who you are. If you think, don't think that farts are funny and like you're, lying to yourself or live a life that doesn't have joy in it in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, you've lost a bit of your um, soul and I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 they're hilarious. Um, and so <clears throat> and so um, in high school, uh, she like kept, you know, calling me Miss Pooter Pie cause like that's how we uh, talk to each other. And I was like, okay, well I'm being a little embarrassed by the whole like Pooter nonsense. Can we, can we shorten that down a little bit? Uh, and so she agreed cause she understood, you know, high school and whatnot. And so she, we shortened it down to Miss Pie. That was my name. And so uh, from high school until uh, the last words that I spoke to her, it was Miss Pie. And so um, as she was um, in hospice care um, um, and make, they're making her comfortable cause she had stage four ovarian cancer. And so we're all in her hospice room saying bye to her. And they took her out to the uh, like outside to get some fresh air for a little bit. And I, I had flown into Florida which is where I was living at with her. Um, and like a little bit of backstory, like my grandmother and I like have a very strong relationship. So like in high school, it was like almost just me and her. And then I left high school, I left college, I left college and then came back to like go to community college and like pick myself back up. And so then it was just me and her for years. It was literally just me and her, like just talking and like bonding and whatnot. So um, as I was leaving her hospice, and like knowing that this is the last time that I was going to see her, I was like, all right, grandma, you know, I'll see you later. I, I love you so much. And I'm trying to like say everything that I, I need to say to her in like these last couple of moments. Right. And so she's kind of out of it because they have her own drugs to like ease her pain and whatnot. And like she, 
I give her a hug and like, she like looks at me and like, you know, in my ears, like as loud as she can say, she's like, I love you, Miss Pie, you know? And like, that was the last thing she ever said to me. Cause like I left and then like, I think a day later she then passed away. Um, so up until that point, I didn't like anyone calling me Miss Pie. It was just a name for her. Um, and so even though I talked to people like with the Feng Fu Pie, like I was like, don't call me Pie. It's not a name for you to call me. Like, don't ever say that to me again. <clears throat> and so after she passed away, like it's all that I want to hear now. And so uh, now I, everyone call, call me Pie. You know, like it's easier because a lot of people have a lot of trouble saying Unica and I don't want to put any anyone through the frustration, you know, of like doing what I think should be the right thing to do, which is learn, learn how to say someone's name. But also I enjoy being called Pi very much so. And so, yeah, the Feng Fu Pi, call me Pi. That's that's how all that came to be. Yeah, a little bit of an embarrassing story, but it, honestly, it's like. I you you mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you prefaced and said it was an embarrassing story, and I'm like, you know, with a with a name like that, I can see that. Cool, I'm prepared mm -hmm. for the hilarity, and then mm -hmm. I'm like sitting here <laughs> trying not to cry my eyes out, <laughs> like embarrassing because it's genuine and has feelings. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Like that. Yeah, that's a really good story. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, and so I forgot to mention the reason why it was Kung Fu Pai, it was Kung Fu Pai, it was supposed to be Kung Fu Pai. Um, I was in high school and I was not sober, I'll just say that, and I typed an F instead of a K and Feng Fu Pai had a nice ring to it and no one had taken that screen name already. And so bingo boingo, that's, that's how Feng Fu Pai became, you know, it should have been Kung Fu Pai, but I think Kung Fu Pai was probably already taken by someone. All of this is good and wholesome <laughs> and none of it is offensive. Like Except even, for that, that, yeah, that hamster. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that hamster can go burn. I've dropped kicked many of those hamsters at Walmarts. So, Oh my gosh, yeah. We had just gotten to Walmart in Bushnell, Florida too. So it was like, we had, like as, as a marching band, we played at the opening of the Bushnell. Like that's how nice. rural Florida that we were in. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I, I need time to recoup from that story. Thank you so much, Unika. Great streams yeah. over. I have feelings yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I don't cut, like that. Fade to black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we get into the meat and bones of what Dicey Amazons and you, Unika, are up to, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned some music happening in your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on one second. I just want to make sure that something is going to... Yep, there it goes. Okay. Um, ooh, ooh so, you sneaky yeah, yeah, yeah. dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we're doing it out here. We're supporting every, we're supporting our community. I feel this, um, I appreciate this. <laughs> thank you, thank you. If anyone's in chat, if you wake up to this, please go give Unika a good thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've been playing music my whole life. That guitar in the background is something that I actually play. It's not just something for me to drape cool lights around. Um, and so uh, I've been playing music my whole life. Like music is my friend. Uh, and so as an adult, it gets more and more difficult to like come back to the things that you really enjoy to do because life and then relationships and then depression and then, you know, like life takes you away from what you need to do. So um, in an effort for um, Dicey Amazons to up our production value, uh, Candy was uh, Candy, our uh, executive producer, was looking for music, um, and so uh, Kalia, a uh, uh, high priestess, was like, you know, you need to play music. Like, why not give her a shot at it? It'll be free, and like, if we don't like it, we can just still go and buy music from someplace else. So, excuse me. Um, luckily. Um, uh, Candy is very gracious with, I guess, like my taste in music because she was like, all right, well, let's give it a shot. So, yeah, right now I have um, I have one track that is listening to it now. I want to go back and make some changes. But long story short, like I'm in the process of making uh, a playlist uh, that I want to make accessible for um, not only everyone, but also uh, I want to particularly push it to Bimpok uh, channels so that like you have something to play that's going to be 
made by someone who's been Pac for people who are been Pac um, and, you know, royalty free um, and, you know, uh, just a, a way to like have music on your channel that doesn't necessarily have to come from, you know, trying to hide or trying to sneak and play it real low so you don't get it caught or like playing a playlist that you don't know where all the songs come from. And I think that being being a good artist does not excuse you from being a good person. So even though there are people that make great music, uh, whether they're world renowned or like small people, like it, I, I think that finding out who the artist is, is important um, because your money counts, your attention counts, your attention is literally monetizable. Um, so if, if you're putting your attention towards people who aren't worthy of your attention, like, you know, you could be that you could be putting it someplace else. And so um, I don't know if, you know, everyone's going to be into like music that I make or whatever, if you're going to like it or not, but I am, you know, creating it um, with the, with the hopes that, you know, you have another option. You know, if you, if you still choose to, you know, listen to music created by Ben Pog people for Ben Pog people, like, by all means. And I will say that, like, I am not a lyrics person. Uh, so all my music is like instrumental, um, dope, fresh beats. Uh, and so, you know, perfect chilling. for stream. Yeah, yeah, perfect for streams. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's honestly amazing. Because I know there have been some streamers and content creators in the industry that have like released some stuff like Harris Heller with stream beats for yeah. DRM free stuff and I'm like cool mm -hmm. I'll use it until I can find something better and more representative of what I like yeah 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 and so that's what I use is why I use him and I realized that even though I'm not paying him for money because it's on Spotify he's making money off of me streaming that stuff, oh yeah you know and so once again like not giving your money to sell or not, or not giving your money to someone does not mean you're still supporting that person. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know anything about um, Harris Heller. He seems like a decent human being, but I only know like the YouTube Twitch persona of that person. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, like he's probably a great person, but I think that, you know, more music by created by and for people like people like us should be available. Um, and so, why not? If you don't like it, you know, I only spent my time on it and I still like it, you know? So like, you know, it's, so a it's a win-win for me. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's really amazing. So you keep saying your music style is weird, but if you had to mm. boil it down to influenced mm. by jazz? Oh, yeah. Heavily influenced by jazz. Um, and not just American jazz, mm. um, which is something that as, as I got into my late 20s or early 30s, like, I've been listening to music my entire life, but, like, only through like the lens of like being an American musician or musician or like music connoisseur, right? right. Um, and so like around 25, I had like this explosion of like listening to music from different European countries, um, like Little Dragon um, that I got, I got into Coop and from Coop, I got to Little Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, and those are both like two, well, Coop is, an, uh, is a group that they make almost solely like instrumental jazz music, but they only use, and I don't know if they've changed their, their their structure, but as far as I knew, they only used like clips of music that is DMCA free. So they like take like old, old jazz songs and like clip it and then make it into a new jazz song. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's, 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 and it's not like basic uh, music. It, it is complex and it has, it, it, it's it's its own story that it's telling now with like these little clips from like different, um, different older songs. <clears throat> Uh, and so uh, it, it, it just opened my world to a whole, to the rest of the world of music. And so like my vinyl collection now has like, every time I go someplace that's new, like I try to get jazz from that particular country because it's expressed, like the, the rules are the same, but expressed in a different manner, right? So um, my favorite band right now is this band called Lamp. Uh, it's a Japanese band. Um, and they, oh my gosh, like this band, imagine if, oh my God. Okay. So imagine if the seventies were embodied by these, this group of Japanese, wonderful human beings, and then they just created music from it. But like, it was made last year, you know? So it has like older sounding chord progressions, um, but still like, is like great 
great music and you don't have to, in my opinion, you don't have to know the language to be able to resonate with the music. Um, and it doesn't hurt that I'm also trying to learn Japanese. Uh, and so like I have friends in Japan and whatnot, and so I'm able to like relate to them over this like relatively small band um, in, in Japan, but if and they're on Spotify. So if you have a chance, LAMP, Japanese group, I literally put on the playlist, this is LAMP and like hit shuffle play. And, and I haven't found a song that I didn't like. I'm about this. I will definitely have to yeah. queue up Lamp on Spotify. Make it happen. Oh yeah. yeah, I can. I will personally send you some of my favorites if you want a place to start. But like, I highly recommend like going to This Is Lamp and hit shuffle play and go like, oh my god, I did not know that they could make music like that. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah. As someone who's like had to grow up classically trained to piano and then ended up picking up uh, guitar and ukulele, I have never ending respect for jazz. When I got to do a my first historical book report on jazz music and I was just like my mind is blown and thankfully mm -hmm. I was in Vegas at the time so the history that I had access to research was not as whitewashed as it could have been so I got to Ooh. learn about the core of black jazz music and I have so much respect you're you're absolutely right when you don't need to know the language when it comes to the expression of music yeah. Uh, when it is done right you you, yeah. you definitely can feel the vibe and the emotions that are coming through yeah yeah absolutely and then it helps to like take your own like take it upon yourself to, like research like what the lyrics are and then to find out that it's actually like a beautiful song mm -hmm. you know or like the song is like very politically charged but it sounds beautiful or like you resonated with it you know to begin to, you know from the beginning um and so back to my vinyl collection like I have like Arabic jazz, which is like mind blowingly Whoa. amazing. Oh yeah, like Arabic jazz from like the seventies. It's the 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 way that they they shape their chord progressions is just it's fascinating in a in a manner that I just I haven't been exposed to it before. So it's kind of like like a kid in a candy store, but I already know all the all the candies. They're just like in different flavors now. Oh, you know? Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I highly wow. recommend it. I will once again, like now that I know you play music and we're not skipping over the fact that you also play ukulele as well. We're going to talk about that <laughs> in a second. Um, but yeah, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll talk music offline. 100%. Uh, I went to Iceland uh, a couple of years ago and like m across the street from my hotel was like this like famous uh, record source. I went in there and was like, I want to find Icelandic jazz. And he was like, okay, people don't ask for that. They want to know like, you know, the cool American stuff. And I was like, no, I want to know how jazz is interpreted here in, in Iceland. Um, and so I got a traditional, uh, I, got two, I got two vinyls there. One was a traditional, like, it was like a jam band from like the late seventies. So it has more of like a, like a synthy feel to okay. it, but still very much jazz. And then this band, Oh man, I, I wish that my records were more organized. I recently moved them, so I just kind of threw my records on onto my my bookshelf. But the band is called High Tower Moses, and they are an Icelandic kind of funk, kind of R and B, kind of jazz group. And like I like yeah, and so like I'm 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 I'm, I'm at this record store and I'm going through vinyl. Like, I'm just like listening to music, like finding out which one I want to buy. And so the guy behind the, the the guy that was working the counter was like such a nice guy he was just like dumping vinyls and just like just go through these vinyls let me know what you like and we'll go from there so i'm in this store and i i picked out the one the other band and then and then he was like this one's a newer group i think you're gonna like them and i'm pretty sure he did that because i was black and it hit the mark so <laughs> <laughs> it was like i'll take both of these i only plan to buy one but i'm going to take two now uh so yeah high tower moses it's all in um and they all they speak in ice iceland icelandic so i have no idea what they're saying but it's it's a great music and it's very much like rooted in like r&b which is like amazing that r&b has made its way to artists in in iceland that is pretty epic and if and when you get the time you make that spotify playlist that's your literal oh, yeah. charcuterie board of jazz music oh, i will yeah. absolutely listen to it yeah, yeah, Moses, Moses Hightower. Hightower. Yeah, yeah, Priestess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Japanese group two save for later. Yeah, lamp, and it's so fun to say I love lamp and to have I that actually. I mean wasn't something. gonna say it. Oh, I, that's the first thing that I thought of because I, 
they came on a playlist from Spotify, like Discover playlist, because Discover mm-hmm. like sends me like the weirdest, and by weird I mean like not typically American mm-hmm. uh, music, and I, I I eat it up like I'm a fat kid in a candy store, um, <laughs> you know, like I'm just here for like all the all the whoppers, um, and uh, yeah, so that they had had a song, and I was like, oh, this song was really beautiful, and then I like clicked on the name and was like, Lamp, really, mm-hmm. and then like hit play and was like, oh, 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 I love Lamp. This is great. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to go like find an interview to figure out why they named the band Lamp because that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, their interviews are far and few between. They have talked about, they've done a couple of shows in Korea and China and Japan. I don't know about any shows outside of like the uh, Pacific, um, Pacific Asia region. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as I know, they don't even like really doing shows. They just want to play music. And I'm like, you know what? I'm okay. Yeah, you're gonna have good music when you're when you're there. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. Next, meat and potatoes. Yeah. Give me the it. dicey Amazons rundown. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me take a sip of water because like yes, it's a yes. lot of content that we've got coming through. <laughs> it is. You gave me the outline, and I'm like, this. No one should be sleeping on any of this at all. The content that you've already put out is there and sh- and is continuing in such an explosively good way. And then your future content, you're just like, what if we add more? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, what if everyone on the Dicey Amazons uh, team had their own show? You yeah. know, like, and that's we basically we love to highlight each and every one of you here. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And like they all have like their individual um, and unique perspectives and shows to bring to Dicey Amazons. So I'm going to go back to my notes, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. Let me try to reload it because like Candy knows that I ramble as I tend to do and uh, I want to stay on on target. And it's not. Well, it's okay. <gasps> this is your 12 minute warning. Oh, 12 minutes. Oh my gosh. Oh my That's gosh. Okay. We can always run a little extra. I'm producing, so I'm here. I'm fine. Yeah, you make the rules. Okay. Okay. Now I have the list pulled up. So let's get back over so I can see your beautiful face. Okay. So um, our current shows. So right now we have a bunch of current stuff um, going on. Um, we have our our bi-weekly um, d- uh, uh D and D five E campaign. That's always a lot, that's always a lot to say. Uh, it's yes. called History Rising, and that is what that that's the that's the foundation of Dicey Amazons. We started off as a TTRPG channel that we just wanted to stream that. Uh, so it's Candy's homebrew um, homebrew campaign, um, and so if you hear us refer to Candy as our and your God, it's because she creates this entire world. Uh, and she is a vengeful God. Uh, she has TPK'd me and Kalia twice in the first round. So. Yep, yep. as one does. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, uh, you know, that happened and we're not letting it go. And we all know that that Candy is the is Sith because of that. I don't care if it was an accident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my character died a painful death and I was not here for it. Um, so that is every other Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, and then we have, uh, I'm just going to go right down the line, not in order of the week, but down the line that Candy sent me. Uh, so then we have a blurt of this and that, which is, it's one of my favorite talk shows on Twitch. And I, I know that it sounds like cheesy and like self-promoting to be like, I love all of our shows. But like, I, I think our shows offer something that you don't see in a lot of other places on Twitch. And that's why I'm so excited to talk about them. So a blur of this and that, which is hosted by Kalia, aka High Priestess, which in if you're in chat right now, she's HP. The HP one that you can't pronounce, that's High Priestess. That's uh, it, it stands yeah. for High Priestess and um, excellent and, and Empress of all that is. Ah, I got okay, it. Okay, okay. Yes. Thick. Yeah, I'm that's proud of choice. myself. I'm gonna write about it in my journal later. <laughs> you um should. <laughs> um yeah so in Kalia's show that is Tuesday nights at 7 p.m all these times are central standard time uh she talks about like black nerd pop culture that includes comics books novels poetry she also like gives us a rant a weekly rant of the news um because Kalia is incredibly intelligent and like politically charged 
um, for better or for worse, depending on how you look at it. I personally love it in her and I'm here for her. It's, I call it the news, but judgy, you know, like she had a rant this past Tuesday um, about um, Jeff Bezos and the, the dynasty that is Amazon. And if she comes, turns up missing, uh, we all know why, because she kind of came for his neck, which was deservedly like what should have happened. Um, but still, we know that they're listening. I unplugged my my Amazon device, but still, I don't trust it. That's valid. I mean, you say <laughs> the news, but judgy. I'm hearing the news, but clinically critical. Yes, yes, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, the next show coming up, or not next show, the next show that we have going on is Parallels. Um, which I've mentioned a few times before. Uh, and that one is hosted by myself and Kalia. And we do that every other Thursday. Um, so once again, like, yeah, you hit me at the perfect week because like if it was last week or the week coming up, like I would have been like, I'm sorry, I I'm screaming by that at that time. Um, so uh, yeah, so that show we uh, we watch right now, we're in the middle of watching an interview from Erica C. Hudgens. Uh, and she was a Black Panther leader for like 14 years. Started at the age of 18. Like imagine being 18 and in the Black Panther Party, like changing the world. Uh, and so then after that, she uh, did, uh, or she not did, but she became a, a, a professor, educator. Uh, now she's an activist for not only like black and brown bodies, but also LGBTQ rights as well. So she's out here like literally saving lives and like devoted her entire life to it. And so I'm immensely grateful um, that I have access through the Library of Congress to like an oral history of like her experiences. Um, because we know, and I'm pretty sure you know as well, like a lot of history that does not solely pertain or make white people look good has been suppressed at a increasingly alarming and detrimental rate, um, which has just led to a lot of misinformation and, and gaps in knowledge, gaps in history for BIMPOC people. Um, and so I'm not waiting for that information to come to me anymore. Like I... And this started because Kalia and La Kalia and I uh, were having conversations about like how I can educate myself on like my history, my heritage, because going further than my great grandmother, I do not know. I don't know. I literally don't know. Like I see, I've seen one picture as a child. Um, and if you ask, why don't I know? The answer is slavery, like flat out. The answer is slavery. Like, how um, do you ask that question in yeah. ignorance? Yeah, yeah. People 100% ask that question, not realizing that slavery has had largely rippling effects that are still affecting us to this day. Um, so yeah, I'm taking it upon myself and the community that, you know, that tune in every other Thursday to have this conversation to like, listen to ways that like, even as, as, as black and brown BIMPOC people, um, we, we don't know what we don't know. You know, so this is a way for us to have a conversation where we can all come to the conversation in ignorance and say, I don't know, but I want to learn. And I want to be able to like take the information that I learned from here and have a conversation that is more than just like, oh, you're a bigot. You know, and I'm going to say you're a bigot because you don't know X, Y, and Z. You don't, you don't understand X, Y, and Z. And I have a more poignant argument for you. <clears throat> so that's parallels and my whole soapbox with that great show every other Thursday. So next Thursday at Dice Amazons at 7 uh, p.m. Uh, and then we have my favorite show, Dicey Debates. <laughs> it is the most ridiculous show that we have. And full disclosure, this show is a, a loose copy of a show from a podcast that um, BuzzFeed used to put on called Another Round with Heaven and Tracy. Um, in which they like what like they they would be drinking during their show and then they would do what what basically what we do dicey debates and so they have they call it drunken debates because they're drinking while they're doing it. Uh, we and by we I mean Candy and I have work or we used to I I my my work changed but Candy still has work after our stream and so like some of us can't drink I don't really drink anymore in general um, and so it's just a nice fun time to debate random words with your friends. <laughs> Um, for the purposes of talking trash. That's that's it. It honestly, when I watch it, it looks cathartic. There's just enough structure to it <laughs> that you could just go at it for two minutes in good faith. 
that you're you're yeah. amidst people who love you and care about you and you're yeah. still ready to throw down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Although I have been told, and this happened twice this past Sunday that I was a little scary. And so I was like, okay, maybe I need to back it off a little bit. Um, no, not in like a, I, like, I can't talk, you know, I can't do this with Pi anymore. It's kind of a situation, but like, oh my God, like Pi, you are, you are competitive and you will not back down from your argument. <laughs> and I say, no, I will not. Can't relate. <laughs> Uh, I'm still hurt. I lost the paper versus uh, the paper versus debate. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone saw this, but High Priestess Kalia um, easily one of the most well-read people that I know. Like in her stream, that wall of books behind her is only a fraction of the amount of books that she owns in her home, and I know because I've seen it. And she has, and she has like gathered us all like in a in a blood pack to help her move all of those books if she so happens to choose to move one day and i am not looking forward to it at all Ooh. i am saving money to hire a moving crew because i'm not doing that mm -hmm. <laughs> um and so um uh, uh during dicey debates this past weekend kalia had um her uh, her word was paper and the other word was variety oh or something I, 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 don't, I don't think the other word was debate. I, okay. I know it was paper versus something, something that like could have been easy for Kalia, a well-read person who has all of this paper behind her. And she was like, paper's cool. You know, like, <laughs> and we were all like, Kalia, we, we were rooting for you. Like that was, that should have been a slam dunk for you. And Kalia <laughs> was like, paper is soft and, uh, and you can put, and she, she didn't even say that you could put words on it. Like her uh, mind just went blank oh and we just no. like, it was, it was, it was, it was hilarious. I don't remember. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pickles. Yeah. Pickles. Yeah. <laughs> that was the other words. <laughs> Sometimes we have those moments where everything just, you have a moment yeah. of clarity in the worst ways and mm -hmm. your brain chooses to block that oh, out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, with, there was another time and I know I'm going way over time here now, but, uh, Christy, who's bringing another show, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, her word was August. Uh, and Christy being the, the biology person that she is started off with the bait with August has a U and a G in it. And that's great. And we were all like, that's, that's all you got. Uh, okay. These are words that you said. They are mm -hmm. technically true and not very mm -hmm. compelling. Mm -mm. <laughs> they are not. And so <laughs> it's always fun, like after a debate, to be like, "Ooh, sis, you missed the mark on that one." <laughs> 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 Which one hundred percent happens to me as well. Like, I am not immune from that. Like your argument was trash, and usually with me, it's like I. I just follow my own train of thought and like argue myself into like either the wrong topic or like I argue against myself. Like it, it happens. Words come out of my mouth and I cannot control them sometimes. Yeah, she literally spelled the word, Katie. She literally That's spelled okay. the word. That's and it okay. was, it was priceless. It was quality content. But like to sum that show up is if you are not watching it, you should be because you are yeah. going to be highly entertained and be afforded yeah. much memorable moments out of it yeah it's good yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, I go back uh on monday or tuesday whenever we get a chance and clip the show so that we can have bite-sized segments to go on our youtube channel yep. shameless plug again um and uh um yeah mind if i do it oh, i typed it wrong yeah nice um uh yeah so uh it in the process of clipping dicey debates in particular I find myself just watching the show and like legit laughing because I forgot what I said a day ago you know and like <laughs> I'm like oh my god it's hilarious and I'm like oh shit I should have been I should be cutting that so I could <laughs> make it into <laughs> what I'm learning is uh the next big project that I have for myself is getting quicker at things like Adobe Premiere Pro because mm -hmm. there are shows that deserve to be clipped and subtitled dramatically like yeah. content creators do and i'm i'm seeing this i'm taking mm -hmm. notes you're, yeah. you're all going to get some highlights okay okay yeah yeah i mean like you're better than me doing it in in premiere i'm doing it using twitch like twitch's yeah creator so like yeah that's i'm clipping it and then just exporting it to youtube and so like, it's not like the 
best production value, but it at least gets the content in a way that's saving it. And it's in like five minute clips as opposed to two and a half hours. The doing is the hardest part. So honestly, Mm -hmm. people get hyped up and worried and stressed about the quality. But like if you're doing it, now it's out there and now you can remember it and people can see you for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I know the only reason I'm trying Premiere Pro is there's a queer Latin streamer, uh, Mermaid Mm -hmm. Queen Jude, who's a brilliant streamer. Great, yeah. great person, and mm-hmm. she's just like, yeah, here, here, I stream about. F- I'm, let me teach you how to do the highlights, and let me show you how I use my cool fonts and these cool zoom in effects. And I'm like, thank you, thank you for caring about us out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so is that available for all of us to yeah, watch? Yeah, yeah. I will go okay, plug I, and check that. on that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I need some of that. I know nothing um, about Premiere at all, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's yeah, not as scary as people think. It is. It is uh, yeah, I'm terrified of it. I'm not going to lie. It is. Yeah. Candy has okay. been like, I need you to start editing videos, Pi. And I'm like, mm-hmm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can have co-working nights where we learn how to video edit. I am not going to lie. I would love that. I would legit love to like just hop on and just like work with y'all. Because sometimes working alone in this room and I work here for my day job too. So I'm just sitting here by myself in my own head for like 14 hours a day. It mm. is not good for my health. It's not. You you got to take you got to make space in your brain to separate the times and, and yeah. we need to socialize in some form or another at our yeah. own paces. So by yeah. all means, yeah. hit me up. Absolutely. We will talk offline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Give me the rest uh, of that okay, lineup. So then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to move as quickly as I can, y'all. I know y'all got things to do. That's okay. Um, our next one is community games uh, and there we play all kinds of games. So we played um, Keep Talking and Don't Try to Explode. Um, we play Jackbox games. Those are just like, uh, 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 sometimes we just have conversations where we just like hang out and talk with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just a way for us to like engage with our community as well, as long as, as well as IC debates. Um, so like I said before, like uh, this is a formal invitation and call out to everyone at Utopia, um, like come to Dicey debates and like catch these words, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm gonna pass it along for anyone who's okay. not here. Okay. Okay. Cool beans. Yeah. I, I, I very much look forward to working with all of you. Uh, and then we have our, our traditional streams. So Candy and I also play video games as well. Um, I play um, a combination of games. Uh, I play Division 2, Warframe, The Witcher. I just finished Ghost of Tsushima. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, oh, that game was such an emotional roller coaster. Like I legit cried on screen. I've never done that before. And I know that other people do, but like I'm not... I'm not an on-camera type of emotional person. And like, I'm so glad that it was on PS4 and I didn't have a camera hooked up because you, you just heard my voice cracking up and like oh. didn't see me like making the ugly cry face. You know, like I was oh. holding it back and like muting my mic so I could like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, sad. I'm waiting for that one. But um, yeah, that's that's a good, good, good to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, um, you make choices that you cannot come back from and... It's uh, it's 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 more in depth and historically accurate than I originally thought it was going to be by being made by Western developers. Um, and then talking with my friends in Japan and reading articles, like they like Japan was like, we're mad that we did not make this. Yeah, uh, exactly. Like they, they went through the archives. The majority of the marks. Yeah. Yeah. It was impressive. Yeah. It was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've also realized in playing Ghost of Tsushima that I need to step up my headband game. Like I need <laughs> way more headbands than I currently have, which is like one bandana. And I need them to be in an assortment of, of uh, patterns and colors and sizes. Um, oh, yeah. So if anyone out there is a seamstress or mm-hmm. know how to use a needle and thread or has a pattern that they want to like shoot my way, like I need, I need headbands. I need... And I, I feel like flowy. we've got like, some, I'm trying to get like, yeah, I feel yeah. like we've got some queer women of color via Etsy and stuff oh, that I yeah. can pass. Oh, along. yeah. Yeah. I, I'm more than willing to like pay what you deserve for this fashion content. <laughs> um, so that OK, so the, that those are the games that I play. Uh, and then Candy uh, plays Kotar Knights of the Old Republic, um, oh. which is. Yeah, Candy, it, it, it's her It's her first playthrough as well. So like she has no idea what's in store for her and I'm excited and I'm a little upset that she hasn't fully like fully actualized her dark side yet um, because <laughs> we've seen it. We've seen it in our in our, in our role playing games, mm. uh, but she's like, oh no, I'm Jedi guys. And we're like, Mm-mm. no, you're lying. You're lying to these people. Stop lying to these people like this, Candy. <laughs> 
do not fool us this way i'm pretty sure yeah 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 don't 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 lie to us okay (laughs) uh and then uh candy's also playing stories the path of destinies um which is it's i i i I hadn't heard of it before uh it's an older game um and it's kind of like a platformer kind of game um and so she uh and the, the thing about this game is that the narrator in the game like talks trash to you while you're playing the game well so like mm. when you do bad the game is like <laughs> get good <laughs> right 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 <laughs> that's awesome yeah 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 <laughs> um so that's all the content that we currently have so that's all the things that you can catch dicey that like you can catch on dicey amazons like in a regular regular scenario um, right now we're coming out with like, with like one, two, three, four, four new shows that are mm-hmm. coming to y'all. Uh, the first one, I'm so proud of this partnership that we've created with Vibrant Legends. Uh, I'm so happy and proud that they, that they decided to, that Leona decided to like bring her community and her platform to Dicey Amazon. She, and she trusted us knowing that we were going to like listen to her and like be able to like give her the space to do what, what she needs to do and like support and promote her, you know? So like, I'm 100% happy to hear and stand uh, Leona and say that uh, Vibrant Legends is coming to Dicey Amazon. And the first show will be August 15th at 4 p.m. So Vibrant Legends is taking that coveted Saturday spot. We we're yeah. like, I we have nothing going on on Saturday. It's all you, boo. Like, handle it. And uh, I think we're going to try and have a test run this weekend. Mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. if we're going to stream it, but I know that I'm just I'm just super stoked about like the the games and the one shots that are going to come from 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 Leona and her platform, uh, Vibrant Legends. Uh, so yeah, I'm very excited about that one. Um, another one, and I, I mentioned this kind of briefly, is Dicey Science, and that one is hosted by Christy. Uh, and so Christy is going to be uh, taking questions. Uh, and so, like, during my morning message to the server, I gave Christy, like, a whole, like, list of, like, answer these questions personally, individually, and to me. Um, and so uh, the tagline for this is, like, Christy's going to cover all the questions that your high school biology teacher wouldn't touch. And so there's some like neurochemistry in there. There's a lot of biology in there, you know, like it's, it's a whole situation. We're making Christy into Bill Nye. But I have like... feelings. I am so excited. <laughs> in another life, Jess would have finished the biomedical engineering degree that they went Ooh. on. So Ooh. I will be sure to smart. tune into this one for oh, I'm so excited. 100%. Yeah, the the best thing about Di- about Christy debating and dicey and dicey debates is that sometimes she goes on like a, a biology rant and it's priceless. It it's is. Priceless. I live. I I gain back yeah. some of my soul when when someone mm-hmm. does that. Please, more mm-hmm. of this, Christy. Yeah, yeah, we need more of this. So that show is coming very soon, uh, and then we have an anime show hosted <laughs> by uh, the lovely Katie and Darcy called Otaku Outhouse. I love the title. Please, yeah, let's get great I'm, graphics for this. Yeah, I'm so ready for this. Uh, and so uh, Katie and Darcy are going to be having a weekly watch party in our Discord server of like whatever anime they're spotlighting for the week. Uh, and then uh, they're going to be discussing it on stream. Uh, they will be highlighting fans, fan art from like either from the the certain anime that they're watching or like maybe they just want to highlight a certain um, a certain artist. Um, and so that show is coming very soon. Uh, and then we have another RPG in, in the works. And so this one is. Yeah, you're uh, teasing me. You're teasing oh, yeah, yeah, me. yeah. I, I was I was not given the uh, the full the full go ahead to like give you all the information, but I will say that this is one of the things that created a music track for, for a background. So, oh yeah, a little, little really in there, you know? Mm. So like music has been created for this. I'm not gonna lie. It's a bop, you know? Like I, I've sent it off to um, some people that I, that I think are highly critical of my work and they were like, you hit got the mark it. on that one. You got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, that one is going to be the PBTA system, mm-hmm. um, which I'm, I don't know what that means. Um, okay, but- so we got a powered by the apocalypse system is what you're telling okay. me. Mm. Um, okay, okay. So that would be uh, Vincent and McGay Baker, Apocalypse World. So they take the 2D6 system 
and you have yeah. playbooks and you have moves. So mm -hmm. I guess you don't have the go ahead to tell me which PBTA it is. I do not No, I, but I'm very excited. Ooh. And the music that I made for it is like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I've had it on repeat several times today. I'm just yes. like walking around the house, just like letting it, letting it play through. And it's my jam. Uh, so yeah, that's coming uh, very soon. I don't think we have an official date for that because uh, that is, yeah, TBD on that particular date, but I know that's coming very soon. Cool. Uh, uh, and then Candy is going to be on the FlameCon panel on the 15th at 5 p.m. Yes, yes. Super Saw excited that. about that. Saw that. Oh, yeah. We'll oh, tune yeah. in. We'll be... Oh, I'm so excited. I love talking with Cypher. I've talked with, uh, with Cypher a few times. Uh, super cool person to hang out with. Um, mm -hmm. Does not take anyone's crap. And mm -hmm. I am living for that mood. You yeah. know, like, Cypher's like, I don't care who you are. You're going to catch these words and a band, okay? Yeah, I mean, Cypher <laughs> is one of the few people that has a presence on Twitch and Twitter that I followed. And she normalizes the idea of conversational consent. Like, yeah. did I ask for advice? Was I mm -hmm. asking for recommendations? Mm -hmm. Did I ask for your words? What do your words give to me that I needed? I didn't. Yeah, yeah. You're creating noise. So it's mm -hmm. it's really good. And a lot of people are like, she's so scary. And I'm like, no, I've sat at her table. I've sat next to her at panels and she is amazing. Maybe yeah. learn how to socialize better. I mean, it's just a thought. It's just a thought. You know, like maybe, maybe you don't have to say that because shutting up costs zero dollars. You know, like you can do that for free with receipts. Um, oh yeah, so. my goodness, we have. I'm so, so ready to turn into that. Much yes, you you absolutely can. No problems. Go fight, <laughs> win. I'm here. I will. I will defend the things that you don't need defending. But look at all this content. Oh yeah. I think I think we need to take like a moment to sit on this because Twitter you only capture a fraction of your audience at any given mm -hmm. moment and mm -hmm. you know you only have 10 seconds of anyone's attention at any given minute of the day. Yeah. So yeah. when someone says dicey amazons we we run into that that bimpak creator uh pigeonhole that problem of like oh Rivals of Waterdeep is a Bimpak only or a black only cast doing D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. And you're like, cool, Dicey Amazon says D&D &D as all queer and POC people. And you're like, cool. Mm -hmm. But they don't take the, the 10 extra seconds to realize how much quality is there. Not just the yeah. identities that are being represented and that you are mm -hmm. showing up to the table and representing yourself and the people who look like you and can relate yeah. to you. But Y'all are on fire. It, it's content, and it is good content, and people Thank need you. to recognize that. So Thank you. with or without pandemic, I do believe 2020 should be a tipping point for you, and we at Utopia will do everything we can to collab and promote and make sure you keep growing to the levels that you deserve to be recognized for. I very much appreciate that, uh, Jess. That, that really means a lot. We have been working very hard to be the representation that we deserve to see. Um, and that does not, does, that does not solely include, uh, you know, black bodies. Um, and so while we are majority um, black, uh, we are not all black. We 100%, I personally seek out other uh, marginalized communities mm -hmm. um, because I know that if my history has been suppressed, like your history has been suppressed as well. And if I want to, be able to come to you from a space of knowledge and understanding. I need to take it upon myself to reach out to you and say like, hey, let's hang out, let's talk. Because it's not just about like me just trying to um, like cipher information from you so I can say, like, oh, now I know this stuff. It's about like creating like a strong lasting relationship with someone. And that's what we're trying to do within Dicey Amazons and with the communities that we talk to outside of Dicey Amazons. And so our tagline of Dicey Amazons is that you are, welcome, you are welcome to our table. And that's not just for black bodies or brown bodies or gay bodies or, or you know straight bodies it, it's for it's for everyone you know like if you want to come and play with us like sit down you got we have a, we have an open seat for you and if we don't have an open seat we will make space for you to come and be included in us um so every time that i talk to anyone you know i'm like come on our channel like you don't have to be you don't have to be black you don't have to be uh you know queer um to come and talk to us um we do 
make an effort to highlight those voices and those 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 thoughts and opinions. Um, but you know, like if you're a nice person, I was just talking with um, uh, a nice guy in our community, Tig, after my stream last night where I was playing Warframe. Uh, we talked for a little bit after I went off of air, uh, and, and he was like, hey, like, I just want to find a way to to help you guys. I know, know, know that you all are like, you know, mostly, you know, um, cis-bodied women, um, but, you know, I want to help out. And I was like, dude, Dicey Debates, like, we actively are searching for people to come out to Dicey Debates. We have other community shows that are not just the, the Dicey Amazons um, cast, um, where we want to interact with you all on our platform and like literally show you that we have a seat open for you to come and hang out with us and like talk trash with us and like build a bond with us because it's not just about monetizing and making money and advertising and like look at all this merch we got and shirts and stuff like that it's about like being like the person that like the the tiny scared child unica wanted to be friends with that didn't have access to you know, when I was trying to figure out my queerness and my blackness and, 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 you know, how my queerness and blackness then fits into the entire diaspora of queerness and blackness, you know, and like, then how does that fit into like marginalized communities? And like, how do I fit all these spaces when I know that we have shared, we have a shared history mm -hmm. um, by not being white, you know, we have a lot of differences, but like we have a lot of similarities and like just talking with you before we went online and like the conversations that we have, um, regarding like the collab stream that we're trying to set up right now mm -hmm. um like everyone that i've met is like hella awesome and like just wants to hang out and like talk and like shoot the shit and it's awesome and we we, just, we don't we want to provide more of that yeah um so yeah in any way that we can try and support everyone around us um you know whether it's talking or have being on stream or or in some cases like sending equipment out to you to help your stream be better um, you know, we're, we're trying to, um, right now, and I'm not sure if Candy's okay with me talking about this, but like, she can't stop me. So, um, uh, there are, you know, some streamers that are in our community, um, that, uh, want to stream and don't necessarily have the funds to have a ring ladder or, or a camera that shows, you know, in, in a good quality. And like, that's something that we can either out of Dicey Amazon's funds or like in some cases, like I'm willing to put in my own pocket. personal money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And be like, hey, like you deserve to have a platform, like, mm -hmm. and you deserve to have like the highest quality that I can, I can provide for you right now, you know? So like whether it's buying a ring light or a mic or, you know, like a cheap mic um, or because I ain't got money like that or no, like a camera, that's, you right, know? That's like, the thing. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, that's the exact energy that Utopia, that I, that obviously y'all want to do it's it's the energy that we need in 2020 it's yeah. yes it's a hustle yes we're fighting for our spaces and for you to hear us but mm -hmm. that's not the epitome of what our makeup is we just want to exist we want to enjoy the spaces that we exist in and we want you in those spaces yeah right mm. so it's good I I feel restored like by a thousand times over from this conversation. I have zero regrets Same. that we ran over a little bit because all of that content needed to be said and deserves to be highlighted. And I'm so thankful that you came on to to the show. Like, thank you. I'm so happy you reached out to me. I literally legit like after we talked first conversation we had, I screenshot it and then sent it to Candy and was like, "Was this you? Did you <laughs> did you do this?" And then I was like, "Ask everyone. Did, did, did someone?" Did someone have you talk and reach out to me? Because like, thank you. And I would hug you if you weren't in COVID times. Um, because like you, you're a great community. Like this is a, this is a great channel. And, you know, to be, to be singled out, you know, for this is, you know, it's an honor. It truly is. Good. Well, you deserve it. More, more, every, everything and then some. And like I said before, uh, we will probably reach out to the rest of the Dicey Amazons because everyone deserves their own individual platform. And y'all yeah. are hella brilliant. <laughs> um but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do another plug if you all lovely folks in chat have not ever seen unica before have not ever seen dicey amazons what are you doing here they're here in chat they're giving us the time of day and you go 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 follow go follow pi go follow the rest of the dicey amazons go support if you can even if it's the free methods and when you are excited about something if you are excited about someone's content the way that we had this conversation, go express that on Twitter. Go express that in the media spaces that require promoting because yeah. that that is restorative and helpful all at the same time for the people yeah. that you are enjoying content for. Go. It costs zero dollars to retweet. 
it does it really does i am stoked i'm hope i wasn't too much of a dork because i was no way too excited for you to be on no, I'm happy to be able to nerd out with you about all kinds of stuff. And I we will talk offline about ukulele. I know that we kind of grazed over that. We didn't circle back to it because you were stalling. And that's cool, whatever. <laughs> but we're going to talk about, about it offline. Unica, not just, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're going to roll on out. Like, thank you, everyone who's been here, who's tuned in and listened to all of this. Please go take care of yourselves. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.